What's up, YouTube family? Welcome to the Linked Up Church online experience. We're so glad you've chosen to tune in. Before we jump into today's video, we want to remind you that this channel isn't just for adults. We have content for babies in the Little Linkland section, kids in the Linked Up Kids section, and relevant services for your teenagers from the plug. So grab the whole family because we're about to get started. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you never miss a video from us. And don't forget to share this video with someone who needs to hear an encouraging message. Let's jump in. So I want to begin uh, my message this morning by asking a simple question. And that question is, what comes to your mind when I say the word fear? Most people would say fear, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. Amen? Fear is like a double-edged sword. It can mean panic, fright, terror on one end, or it could mean reverence, awe, honor, respect, on the other end. Amen? Let me read to you a survey uh, that I pulled uh, from actually the CDC website. This survey was taken last June, June 2020. All right? Uh, There were 5,415 people surveyed. Roughly 25% of young adults between the ages of 18 and 24 say they considered suicide because of the pandemic. About 31% of the respondents said that they had symptoms of anxiety and depression. About 23% reported trauma and stress-related disorders. Over 13% said that they had used alcohol, prescription, right, legal or illegal drugs to deal with the pandemic-induced stress and anxiety. Actually, all they had to do was call on Jesus, amen? So what I want to talk to you today, the title of this message is this. Don't let fear warp and distort your reality. The bottom line is trust that God will always make a way. Amen? Turn with me to Psalms chapter 56. I want to read verses 1 through 4. And I'll be reading out the King James Version. And it reads, be, this is King David talking, Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresses me. Verse 2. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me. O thou most high, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. And then verse 4. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh or man or Satan can do unto me. Hallelujah. Don't fear Satan. Don't fear man. So let's get into it. So in Psalms 56, David is crying out to God, right, because there were many enemies he was fighting at that time, right? He was oppressed, right? David said, I'm oppressed daily. We know that he was running for his life. We know that he was hiding in caves. Now, David was used to the finer things in life, right? He was a warrior, but he was also an aristocrat. So while he's hiding and ditching and dodging and going from cave to cave, understand this. It was the fear that gripped him. And when fear grips you, It will motivate and move you, get this, to do the unimaginable, like some of the statistics that I read to you. Fear will seize you 
and warp what you know to be true. We know that God will always come through, right? We're not confused about that. He has showed himself strong so many times in our past, but a little trouble comes knocking at the door, and what? It warps the truth. We, don't, we, we forget about God delivering us in the past, right? Money gets a little tight. Oh, God, what am I going to do? Well, what did you do in the past? He will come through, right? No matter the sickness, no matter the illness, no matter what it is, trust in God. Don't lean on your own way. Lean on Yahweh, amen? So fear, if you let it, will warp and distort your reality. Now in verse 2, David says, my enemies would swallow me up. In other words, my enemies thirst for my blood. In Hebrews, this is a term uh, used of a wild animal, right? And it describes uh, uh, the panting and the snorting when the animal has his prey and, it, and he's over the prey. Uh, you guys remember the, the, anybody remember the movie The Revenant with, with Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, the bear was chasing him and then the bear had him on the ground? So the bear is over him panting and snorting. Well, this is like the, it, that's the enemy over us and fear over us when we allow it to have its way. Because our enemies uh, are, may not be exactly like David's, but we do have enemies. Debt is an enemy. Right now, we're teaching financial peace. And what we teach our students in the class is to hate, to disdain, to abhor debt, because debt is a tool of the enemy. Depression is an enemy. Lust is an enemy. Lying is an enemy. Sugar. can be an enemy. I had three slices of birthday cake uh, yesterday. It was an enemy. Brown sugar can be an enemy. What do I mean by brown sugar? 36, 24, 36 can be an enemy. 6, 2, 2, 15, dark and lean can be an enemy. So the word enemy simply defines this way. An enemy is a thing who harms or weakens another. And a lot of times, we want to give Satan all the credit, but a lot of that is us. All right? So the Apostle Paul in the New Testament summed it up this way. In Romans uh, chapter 7, verse 19, King James Version, he said, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Let me read Romans 7, 19 in the NIV version. It reads this way. For I do not do the good I want to do. But the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. We know that we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Amen? So King David came to the realization now, let's go back to uh, Psalms 53, uh, verse, uh, I'm sorry, Psalms 56, verse 3. He said in verse 3, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. What time I am afraid, that kind of sounds like Ebonics, don't it? <laughs> what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. David was in so much fear, he couldn't even get his words right. Because what he really was saying is, in the day I am afraid, I will trust you, Father. In the day I am afraid, I will trust you, Father. Say that with me. In the day I am afraid, I will trust you, Father. Hallelujah. But nevertheless, he said, I will not fear what flesh or man can do unto me. See, when life throws you a curve or when you do the things you know not to do, or when you get to the point where you, it, it, it just doesn't look right, it doesn't smell right, it doesn't feel right, it ain't right, when your back is against the wall. At some point, at some point, we should come to our senses, I'm going to use that word, that phrase, and acknowledge and honor him because he's still in control. 
he never said that we wouldn't have bad times, we wouldn't have adversity, uh, we wouldn't have uh, hard times. But what he said is that I will always be with you. All right? I will always be with you. All right? So when you're going through, you're not camping out in the valley. You're going through. Know that the Lord is there with you, and he will get you through it. Two big fat angels, two big strong angels, goodness and mercy, will follow you all the days of your life. Amen? So, at some point, we have to acknowledge and honor and praise God. To some people, it has to, it has to get dark before they really realize that the light was in them all the time. Before the light, they realized that the light was always shining upon them. All right, God calls us a chosen generation, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood for a reason, because we are his and he is ours. Hallelujah. All right, so we don't have to act like David running from cavemen. But David did these three things. I want to impress you. First, he said, in God, I will praise his word. Secondly, he said, in God, I put my trust. And then he said, I will have no fear. So look at your neighbor and say, have no fear. Hallelujah. That's straightforward. No chaser. That should be our battle cry. We don't fear man. We don't fear evil. We don't fear enemies. Hallelujah. And we certainly don't fear Satan because God tells us in the Bible that we have the power to tread on scorpions and serpents, that, they, that Satan is beneath us. So we should act like it. Shouldn't be moved by situations. We should expect situations. We're Christians, right? Jesus said they would hate us more than they hated him, right? So we shouldn't be vacillating. Oh, I love the Lord today. Oh, I don't know tomorrow. You love him at all times and just know it and persevere and endure and know that he will come through on your behalf. Hallelujah. God will always make a way, right? So we can say boldly because we know that because we haven't been given a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind, right? So strong concordance defines fear as to be afraid, be frightened, to revere, to respect. To revere, to respect. We should fear the Lord, amen? I'm reminded of a time when uh, my wife, and by the way, I, I should have introduced her in the beginning. Uh, my wife, Minister Diane, uh, a lot of you know our story. It take me about 10 sermons to tell you about that. But we've uh, been married 37 years this past Monday. And I thank the Lord uh, that <laughs> he's given her the grace to deal with me for all these years. Why y'all clap on that one? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> many years ago, we went to Hawaii. Uh, I think that was the second time we went to Hawaii. And um, for some reason, you know, when you go places, I don't know if she was smelling the uh, uh, beautiful Hawaiian air or the, the blue Pacific Ocean moved her, but uh, my wife... Mr. Diane came up with this idea that she decided, let's go kayaking. Mind you, we have never been a, spent a day kayaking in our life. So the morning we decided to go kayaking, um, it, it, was, it was actually a storm blew through. All right, torrent rain. The waves were choppy and moving and everything. But in Hawaii, that kind of happens in the morning time, and then it kind of calms down in the, in the evening time. So the place where we went, we purchased uh, the kayak. is a two-person kayak. And they tell you in the fine print uh, that when you, uh, when you pay and you go through the training, then no matter what happens, uh, you don't get a return on your money. So if you know me, and I paid my money, some kind of way, we're going kayaking today, all right? And it was, it was us and about 16 other people. So they take us through training, 
So we had to wait out the day. So we're all there, you know, you know, anxious to go kayaking, and and the rain and the and the and the water and the wind. So we had to wait it out. So we did wait it out. Uh, matter of fact, all those really should have been clues from the Lord, right? So we did wait it out, and we finally uh, got in the water. So we go kayaking. Diane's on the front, and I'm on the back. Um, and again, the winds are choppy. This is the Pacific Ocean type, type of deal. And she kept falling out of the kayak. So she tipped the kayak over. I swim to her, put her back in the kayak, and I'd get back in the backside of the kayak. Now remember, we had, we, we had on life preservers, right? I don't think it helped her, but we had on life preservers. So this happened you know, quite a few times, I think about five times. But you're in the water, so you're moving, and, and in your mind, you, you, you don't realize the proximity you are to the shore, or how far you are, because you're, con you're concentrating on standing, first of all, in this kayak and, and trying to paddle this thing. So the fifth time she fell in the water, I come up, and I had to search for her, and I look around, and here she is, but this time was different because I can see the distress and the fear and the terror in her face. Right? And she's fighting the water, right? So I'm like, oh, Lord. So then I swim to her as fast as I can. And, you know, all this is happening. Of course, now she's fighting me, and I'm trying to stop hitting me. I'm trying to, get, I'm trying to save you, I'm trying to get you up, right? So at some point, I, I, I have her balanced. We're in the water. Baby, it's okay. I got you. It's okay. I got you. I got you. And then I realized something. I said, Diane, stand up. <laughs> she stood up and the water was right here. That's good, that's good. So what happened? She let fear warp and distort her reality. Tell your neighbor, don't let fear warp and distort your reality. When you're in water, always just stand up. Trust that God will make a way. All right, turn with me to John 10.10. 10. It says in John 10.10, 10, we know that's a very familiar piece of scripture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now, this is in the red letter, letter so we know Jesus is speaking, right? And we have been taught that Jesus only says what the Father says, right? We know that God does not waste words. So God does not waste anything. In the first two words, the thief. The thief. He gives us Satan's job title right away. You can stop right there, really, the thief. The title in itself tells you enough, right? And uh, the, the word the, we learned it in, in, in a grade school that that's a definite article, right? So I knock on your door and I introduce myself as the thief. Would you let me in? Would you let me in your car? Would you allow me to be around your family? The thief. Now, God just really doesn't stop there. He says, let me make this thing plain, crystal clear. The thief, and then he tells us the job description after the title. He comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. He's a stealer and a killer and a destroyer, right? No way we can get that misconfused or confused. No way we can get that twisted. There is no good in Satan. Satan hates all of us. He's an equal opportunity thief. He has perfected thievery. 
But now let's get to the second part of the verse. God's best is always present. Somebody say, but God. In his infinite love, wisdom, and mercy, he chisels in the B section, right? Right? He says conversely, and of course it describes another, right? Let's leave Satan and let's fixate on Jesus. The first two words should be enough. I am. That's his job, Tyler. I am. I am whatever you need. I am, matter of fact, I am before you know you need it. I am even when you don't deserve it. I don't change. Jesus says, I am. And then we see his job responsibility, right? It tells us in the B part. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am your light in darkness. I am the good shepherd. I am the gateway to the sheep. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. I am your strengthener. I am your peace. I am your joy. I am your wisdom and I am your redeemer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man. Now, if you didn't get that, you're a little bit slow. Now, come on. Jesus is all that you need. Pandemic, scandemic, tantemic. Jesus is all you need. Now, that word abundant in the Greek is a word called barisian, and it means super abundant and overflowing. So if we put that back in the scripture, it would read, I am come that they might have life, that they might have it more super abundant and overflowing. Hold on. Did you get that? So God is saying, I want to give, Jesus came so that we would have life more abundant, more super, and overflowing. That's for you and that's for me. That's how good our God is. Won't he do it? Hallelujah. Turn with me to Philippians 4, 7. Let's get a little deeper. And it reads, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. All right? So then, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. All right? Then verse 9. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, you do. And the God of peace shall be with you. The things we've seen Jesus do because we've learned them, we've received them, we've heard them. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. He's telling us to do because those are the things that will bring us peace. Not any type of peace, the peace of God. So the scripture stated, keep our hearts and our minds, right? So we have that, what we call the hidden man of the heart, right? Our, our inner man and our inner man, our inner spirit, human spirit, connects to the Holy Spirit. In Proverbs 20, 27, it tells us the spirit of man is like the candle of the Lord, searching the inward parts of the belly. So God uses our human spirit as a light searching the inward parts of us to determine the good and the bad. Right? This spirit is the spirit that knows <clears throat> our mind, our will, and the seat of our conscience. So by searching it, what does God do? He brings to light what's in us. Amen? So God is saying, let his peace, which goes beyond understanding, save or preserve our hearts, which is the human spirit, and it knows the mind, the will, and and our spirit, as well as the carnal part of ourselves, right? So the mind is a battlefield. But because we know the thief wants to pant and wants to swallow us up, as we just read in Psalms, because he wants to warp and distort our reality, as example with my, my wife, the old great swimmer Diane, we know all things by an unction of the spirit. 
And that unction will do what? Lead us into all truth. So God knows our minds, and our minds need to be kept in constant renovation, which is why we should renew it day by day, filter it, water it, wash it with the word of God. Amen? So verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things of a good report, if there be any virtue, goodness, or excellence, if there be any praise, commendations, think, right, ponder, meditate on these things. Our minds flow in the natural. Right? We always reason one way or the other. Sometimes it's contrary to the truth. One plus one is what? How do you know one plus one is two? We put trust in the, in the uh, uh, addition table. Two times two is? How do you know it's four? We have faith in the multiplication table, right? So these things we know mentally, but we've accepted them as truth, right? right? So it's the things that we don't see. This is a message God's trying to get over. It's the things we don't see. Those are the things that will last through eternity. That's why he says you just walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? See, to, to God, things uh, happen in the, the spirit realm before the, the supernatural is manifested in the natural realm. So to God, one plus one could equal 135. Our mind can't comprehend it, but he does. And he doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. To him, two times two could be 4,900. If there's such a phrase and a word and a term. Because he's God. He's not confined. He's not restricted. He's not limited. He's not placed in a box as our puny minds are. Amen? That's why we have to keep our minds in check. We have to keep our minds on lockdown, right? We must always and habitually and constantly have reverence and awe of God. You know, back in Hawaii, when uh, Diane realized that her feet was on solid ground, I, she actually started shouting, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah, right? In the water. She was praising God. So in that instance, the fear, the false evidence appearing real, actually changed into something else. It changed into reverence. I'm going to call it, she was fanatically expressing an awesome reverence for God. So your F-E-A-R, if you choose, could be the F-E-A-R that everyone says, false evidence appearing real. Or because words have power, because words have power, and they hang out in the atmosphere. You know, you, you ever walked into a room and you thought to yourself, somebody's been cooking fish in here. It lingers in the atmosphere. So the words we say linger in the atmosphere. You ever walk into a room and, and it, you think, man, it's so thick in here. I don't know what went on, but somebody was getting into it because you could tell words just that the, 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 this changed the whole situation and the mood. So our words do produce. That's why the Lord says every man will be judged by the words of his mouth, right? Every word spoken, every cup of cold water refused to give it. Or your fear, F-E-A-R, could be fanatically expressing awesome reverence to the Lord. Turn with me to John 16, 33. Yeah, think about that for a second. It reads, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world you'll have tribulations, but uh, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Uh, in one translation, 
Uh, it says, in the, in the world you'll have trials and tribulations, distress and frustration, but be of good cheer. Take confidence. Be undaunted. Turn with me to John 14, 27. King James Version, it reads, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. There's nothing that the world can give you. There's nothing that the world can give you that can be compared unto your God. Peace I leave with you. God is peace. He's leaving his character. He's leaving a representation of him with us. He said it right here. Peace I leave with you. I, he doesn't even take it for himself. He leaves it with us. And he freely gives it to you. He says, I give it unto you. Don't trust the world. Don't trust what the world is giving. Trust what I'm giving. He says, I give it unto you. Let your heart, let not your heart be troubled. So he wouldn't have said it if he didn't realize sometimes our hearts get troubled. But he's giving us the antidote. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. He's telling us not to worry. Worry, anxiety, it causes physical ailments. It causes physical ailments. It causes spiritual ailments. Don't be moved by CNN. Don't be moved by the talk at the water cooler. Don't be moved with your friends over there or the other set of friends over here. Only be moved by the word of God. So what, is, what, what manifests from worry and anxiety and fear? Okay? I, I jotted down some, 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 some thoughts that the Lord gave to me. Worry is a disease that causes other ills. Worry is borrowing other trouble that we can't pay back. Worry is thinking, brooding over what might not even happen. And most times, if we're true with ourselves, we worry about stuff and think, Phew, it didn't happen that way. Phew, it didn't come that way. Phew, that was a quick meeting. Phew, he, he didn't say what I thought he was going to say. It happens all the time. Worry is mental torture and physical suicide. Think about that for a second. How many times have you tortured yourself and in the end, nothing? In the end, God took care of the situation. In the end, because we overthink and we overthink and we overthink, we came up with 25 different scenarios 15 different alternatives. And all we had to do was sit, get our butt somewhere and sit down and just let God do what he does. Worry is a robber of peace. It's a robber of faith. It's a robber of trust in our Father. Why? Because he never fails. He's never failed us. Not in the past, not in the present, and he won't fail us in the future. We put our trust in him. We put our confidence in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worry. Get this one. It's anxiety over what is nothing today and less tomorrow in the eyesight of faith. What is worry compared to faith? Why do I give so much weight to worry and less weight to faith? Is not my faith stronger than my worry? Worry represents the enemy. Faith represents God. You balance the two. Worry. 
worry is foolish. In other words, it's foolish to worry about what might not even happen. And if it does not happen, we have exposed ourselves to a mental cruelty for nothing. And if it does happen, in the end, we have victory through trusting in God. That's why we're called world, that's why we're called overcomers. We overcome the works of the enemy by walking by our faith with our Lord, Savior, and our Master. God has our back. God has your front. God is surrounding you like a hedge of protection. Don't you give up and don't you give in. Don't you think that worrying is going to change your situation. Know that trusting in God only will change your situation. No matter how dark it is, no matter what the paper says, no matter what you read on the internet, no matter what you hear in social media, God is always there fighting on your behalf. He's got your angel walking and protecting you from left to right, front to back. Don't you, you won't miss it if you just stay in the center, in the core of his will and believe on his word. His word will see us through every single time. He has yet to fail us. Matter of fact, failing is not in God's, uh, he, can't even speak, he can't say the word failing, right? Because if you said failing, remember, he, 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 speak, he spoke the world into existence. Failing came from Satan. Didn't come from the mouth of God. God says victory. God says peace. God says joy. God says you have everything you need, and it's right here in I am. So I am here for you. You might not receive me like you should, but I'm still, I am. I don't change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, I want to kind of bring this to a conclusion. I want to leave you with three points of application. First, don't fear Satan. Don't fear man. When you feel something rising up and it's, it's beginning to tilt you toward anxiety, toward worry, toward over-concern, reach back and grab a scripture. Reach back and say, with God on my side, who can be against me? Huh? With God on your side, who can be against you? What angel in heaven could be against you? God is on your side. What man in earth could be against you? God is on your side. What demon in hell could be against you? God is on your side. And the Bible says one with God is a? As a thank you. One with God is a? I got two. One with God is a? I got three. One with God is a? I got five. One with God is a? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So just remember, God is on your side. If you're a believer, God is on your side. And if you're not a believer, we're going to give you an opportunity to put God on your side even more. But God is on your side. So don't fear Satan. Don't fear man. Do fear God. Do reverence God. Be immovable in your faith. If God said it, it's in the Bible. You can take it to the bank. When I say take it to the bank, when God writes a check, he writes a check with an unwavering hand. You can count on it. Nothing from God bounces. Some men, leave that alone. Secondly, I am is all that you need. I am is all that you need. In him is that super, is that abundance. In him is that overflowing. And finally, trust God at all times uh, by using his word at any time. True false evidence appearing real turns into fanatically expressing awesome reverence. Amen? Amen. I sure hope you got something out of that word.
But we've really come to the most important part of, of uh, today, the most important part of our service. And that's when people are making a life decision. Believers, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads in prayer, both, basically both, I'm sorry, online and also in the building. Because this is when God manifests his love even more so than ever because he knows that there are lives, lives that are hanging in the balance. You know, we never know what situation somebody else is dealing with. We never know when people are really contemplating suicide, contemplating hurting another. We exist as believers to bring you out of the camp of the enemy and translate you into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. See, today you have an opportunity to change your trajectory. That, that little unction you feel in your heart on the inside, that's the Lord saying, I'm here for you. I'm, I'm knocking at the door. And I'm the great I am. And I'm reaching out my hands unto you and asking you to receive me into your heart and confess me to be your Lord and your Savior. I will fight your battles. I am and I exist for you and for you only. You should never lose, lose sleep at night. You should never believe that the dark side is all that you'll ever be, all that you'll ever ascend to. You've lived a certain way and you've gotten your own results. God is saying, come to me and let me give you my results. I love you and I want to be your Lord and your master and I want to be your savior. Don't let fear warp and distort your reality. You are too important to me. I made you. I made you for a purpose. I made you for a reason. And I'm here to fight your battles. So if you feel that unction of the Spirit, and you don't know Jesus to be your Lord, your Savior, or your Master. You've never asked Him to come into your life. Well, I, right now, I'm giving you that opportunity. And it's that important that we take a little time as believers are praying, heads bowed, because they're praying for you. We all know how important it is to leave the world, the kingdom of darkness, and come over to God's side. That's when the scales will truly be removed from your eyes. That's when you begin to get wisdom and revelation and you begin to think differently and act differently, then your situation and your circumstances will change. So if you've never asked God to be your Lord and Savior, I'm giving you that opportunity right now. Second invitation, if you've walked away from the Father, if you have broken fellowship. Now's the time to come back. God is always standing there with open arms. He's never lost his love for you. He loves you immensely. And he's saying, come back to me today. Return unto me. Let's get that fellowship restored in the name of Jesus. And my third invitation, if you don't have a home, because all sheep uh, needs a home and you need a pastor we'd love to have you to become part of linked up church we have a dynamic ministry with dynamic pastors and we're here to change this world so let me repeat those invitations if you don't know the Lord here's your opportunity to receive him 
If you want to restore a broken fellowship, here's your opportunity. If you're looking for a church home, we'd love to have you here at Linked Up Church. So if any of those invitations resonate with you and you want to have part of those, would you raise up your hand? Please just lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands. Because now's the time. Even those online, you can let us know that you also receive any of those invitations. You can text, get connected to the number on your screen, 833-988-2009. Text that and get connected, and we'll reach out to you. Thank you so much for watching our online service. We certainly don't take that for granted. And if you enjoyed today's message and you want to get connected with us, we encourage you to become a part of our online community. That's right. And you can do that by subscribing to our YouTube channel, sharing this video with a friend and following us on social media. Don't forget to meet us right here on this channel every Sunday for our services. If you desire to help us reach more people just like yourself and advance the kingdom of God, then click the Give button now. This will allow us to connect more people to God, their families, their purpose, and their communities. Thank you again for watching our service on today, and we'll, we'll see, see you next week. week.